Hare Krishna devotees, please accept my humble obeisance as all glorious of Prabhupada. Welcome devotees to our morning Bhagavatam class. I know we could go on with the Kirtan, but I have to respect Chandramali Swami's time here <laughs> because Maharaj is here to give a wonderful class. And uh, we are going to be discussing from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 16, Verse 7. And the chapter is entitled, How Maharaj Parikshit Received the Age of Kali. We are very happy to have His Holiness Chandra Mali Swami here with us. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to you and your Prabhupada. Was that your body? Yes, Maharaj. <laughs> yeah, <was> your body. You can blow the crowd away. The crowd away you know? <laughs> yes, Maharaj. He can really blow it off. <laughs> I was just with him. Oh, Sadhu. nice. Oh, in Osada Sangha. Nice, nice. Yeah. Where was that? Was that, was that, that must have been Bharadesh Mellows, right? Well, I don't know much because it says 10 hour kirtan. So I'm, I, I, I did not catch the location, but I did see that it says 10 hour kirtan. So I don't know where that was. <laughs> I missed that the location. I just caught the hours they had it for. <laughs> Could have went on for 10 hours. Yes. Okay. Bhagavatam, Srimad Bhagavatam, Amalam Paranam. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Rudrayu Samnirnam Anga. Markyanam Ritta Ichitam Yehopahuto Bhagavan Ritir Samitra Karmani O Sutu Goswami There are those among men who desire freedom from death and get eternal life. They escape the slaughtering process by calling the controller of death Yamaraj. <clears throat> Purport, a living entity as he develops from lower animal life to a higher human life and gradually to higher intelligence becomes anxious to get free from the clutches of death. Modern scientists try to avoid death by physiochemical advancement of knowledge, but alas, the controller of death, Yamaraj, is so cruel that he does not even spare even the very life of the scientist himself. The scientist who puts forward a theory of stopping death by advancement of scientific knowledge becomes himself a victim of death when he is called by Yamaraj. But to speak of stopping death, no one can, you can enhance the short period of life even by a fraction of a moment. The only hope of suspending the cruel slaughtering process of Yamaraj is to call him to hear and chant the holy name of the Lord. Yamaraj is a great devotee of the Lord and he likes to be invited to kirtans and sacrifices by the pure devotees who are constantly engaged in the benefit and service of the Lord. Thus the great sages headed by Shonika and others invited Yamaraj to attend the sacrifice performed at Naimi Sharanya. This was good for those who did not want to die. Magyan Timiranda Shia Giranjana Sarakha Chaksun Militam Yena Tas Mai Sri Guru Veda Maha Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Vivakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Devu Gauravani Pracharine Nervase Sasunyavari Pasyat Yade Sutarine Panchakopa through his chakri pa sindhu. Hey, bacha patitanam, pavane gyo, vaishnane gyo, no mahona maha. Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya, Abu Nityananda, Sia, Dvaita Gadatars, Srivasadi Gaur, Vakta Rindam. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama, Hare Hare. Hmm. So, no one wants to. Everyone is forced to end 
their existence in the present body, and that is called death. And there have been attempts by so many persons trying to somewhat circumvent the process of death, but they can't do it. The material body is subject to the time element. As it's mentioned here, one cannot even extend their life even for a fraction of a moment. Of course, unless they become a devotee of the Lord, and they are no longer under the cruel uh, clutches of death, but are under the care of the Supreme Lord personally. And he will, he can extend one's life and shorten one's life. And he can bring one to pure spiritual consciousness, which is above all of the inebrieties of the material world. <clears throat> Here it says the only hope of suspending, suspending the cruel slaughter process, slaughtering prize to call him to hear and chant the holy name of the Lord. The so Yamaraj likes Kirtan. It's actually mentioned in a few places he actually likes to attend the Kirtans of the Lord. <clears throat> and so when he's in Kirtan, he doesn't think about doing his service <laughs> of bringing people to. Yeah, what we call it, Yamaloka. Or Pitriloka, that's actually the place. Pitriloka, Pitriloka. The place of Yamaraj for people who are sinful, who do not worship the Lord, who do not perform any pious activities, who simply live in this world to satisfy their senses. They come under his role. And therefore, they have to pay for their reactions. <clears throat> Every material activity has an equal and opposite reaction. These are the laws of nature. These are the laws of God. <clears throat> but <clears throat> the bodies, they're free from death. <clears throat> One of the elements it says a devotee is fearless, <clears throat> even in the face of death, because they know that when I die, then I'll, when I leave this body, I'll go to a better situation in life. I'll be elevated maybe to higher planets or maybe even I'll attain liberation where Krishna performs his pastimes somewhere in the material world. Or I might even go back home, back to Godhead. Of course, that's the, the desire of all devotees achieve perfection and go back back to Godhead. But death for the devotee is a door to eternal life. So the devotees welcome Yamaraj because he is the friend of the devotees as it says here when you invite him to the kirtan. He likes to be invited to kirtan and sacrifices by the pure devotees. We're constantly engaged in devotional service. When his assistants, the Yamadudas, tried to take away a Jamil and were thwarted by the Vishnu Dudas, they were mortified. They couldn't believe that we are working under the supreme personality, Yamaraj, and his law is absolute, and we're simply carrying out his law. But now we are you know, stopped. And of course, they were defeated by the um, the Vishnu duty. And after they returned to uh, the Yamaraj, and they wanted to know what happened. We, you know, you're, you're, you're the supreme. And uh, what happened? You didn't protect us from doing our service. We're simply acting on your behalf. And they wanted answers. <laughs> Yamaraj would try to explain that the devotees of the Lord is not under the influence of myself. But the Yamadudas came on to us thinking, is there someone higher than you? You are the supreme rule within the existence. So 
And then Yamaraj starts to explain to them, actually. Although Yamaraj is very powerful, sometimes he's called the second super son. There are three personalities who know the hearts of all of them. One is Krishna in the heart, the super son. The other one is Lord Shiva. And the other one is Yamaraj, the three of them. Know all of the activities of the creation, so both pious and impious, whatever, or mixed pious and impious. So these three are very powerful, and Yamaraj is given special privilege. And that privilege is that he has to do their service. So anyone in the material world, there is they don't understand this is the foolishness of the living entity. They think they can do whatever they want. And if they can avoid the suffering that comes by way of the activities in the material world, they're free. But even if they avoid the suffering, still that that activity has an accountability. And then they have to, after they leave the body, they're forced to get the reactions and going to the lower planets. And then they have to get the results of the end, suffer tremendously, and then be again thrown into another body, sometimes in a species that is lower than human beings. So material life is, uh, is a situation of punishment, either during or after. <laughs> there's no happiness, there's no satisfaction, there's no peace in material life, because it's all about running away or trying to oppose the supreme lord by trying to be like him and therefore the lord arranges all right you want to be like me there's only one place for you to be and that you can't stay here in this spiritual world you have to go and, and play out this dramatic performance of being like me in another place but i give you a body and it's temporary because that way you'll understand after some time you cannot be like me <laughs> therefore you'll have to give it up and come back to me so uh, krishna arranges everything but a devotee has no fear of death and says it says that the devotee, devotee has he remembers two things and he forgets two things Two things a devotee should forget and two things a devotee should remember. One, he should always forget all of the good things that he has done for others. He should forget all the bad things that people have done to him. That way we become free from anger, from pride, from envy, from, uh, and we develop a sense of forgiveness and peacefulness and we should always remember two things we should always remember the holy name and we should always remember that death is always there and can appear at any time but the body is not fearful of that but they make that remembrance of death a feature of their practice in devotional service because they want to use every bit of time to you that there is available to become perfect in their spiritual life. Devotee's desire to live means the devotee wants to use whatever time is left to reach perfection. And therefore, devotee uses every minute in Krishna consciousness knowing that this world is what it is, it's temporary. <laughs> But for the non-devotees, they fear this element of death. In fact, it's not a subject that you talk about amongst the non-devotees. They always want to change the subject or criticize you for being a pessimist or someone who is a fatalist. Therefore, it says that if a non-devotee wants to become enthusiastic in their process of achieving their goals and desires in life, 
They have to forget about that. Because if they remember death, they can't become enthusiastic for what they're trying to achieve. And if for a devotee, a devotee always remembers death, death because they can become enthusiastic to, to leave this body and go back home, back to Godhead. So it's a whole different realm. And what is that death? That death is Krishna. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Mitya Sarga Harasya Aham. In the 11th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna makes this statement I am death. <laughs> and death is the unmanifested feature or the, what we say, the impersonal aspect of the Supreme Lord in order to bring a closure to the living entity's foolishness of trying to enjoy in this material world and wake them up to their actual position. And so here, the Amaraj, he's a friend of the devotee and he likes to be invited to kirtans. And whenever you have kirtan programs, we should always make a prayer to Yamaraj and invite him to come. And he can appear. You may not be able to see him, but if he wants, he can appear. And Prabhupada would mention different times when there were cer ceremonies going on or kirtans going on. Prabhupada said, when Narumuni has come, <laughs> you know, sometimes he would say that Narumuni has come. So the great souls, especially the demigods, they appear in an unmanifested form, sometimes, many times on this planet to take part in the devotee's practice. And sometimes they even become manifested, but that's very rare. But they do appear in different ways. And Prabhupada. They had a program for Srila Prabhupada in New York and they were advertising it. This was in the very beginning of the movement. And the devotees had worked hard to, to, to secure this large auditorium and at the same time publicize this, that this very intelligent sadhu from India, a very spiritual person from India, will be giving a discourse on spiritual knowledge. And so uh, when it came to the program, only seven people showed up aside from the devotees. And the devotees, after a while, after the program, Prabhupada preached like there were 700 there. And at the end of the program, they said, oh, Srila Prabhupada, we're sorry, hardly anyone came. And Prabhupada immediately responded, didn't you see Narada Muni was here? So Prabhupada could see Narada Muni had appeared. And that happened many times. And Prabhupada would say yes. When the opening of the Krishna Balaram temple, Prabhupada also mentioned that the demigods appeared for that one too. So yeah, the demigods, they do appear. So we want to invite them because they are the friends of the devotees. And they support the devotees and they also help to bring about Krishna consciousness. So it says here that the sacrifices performed here, headed by Shanaka and others, they invited Tamaraj to attend sacrifices, Nami Sharanya. And it says that this was good for those who do not want to die. So very few people want to die. There is a class of people who are so miserable that they look forward to death and sometimes even take their own life <laughs> in order to uh, bring about some closure on their suffering. But all they do is temporarily postpone the suffering. And when they get another situation, or sometimes they don't get a situation, then they have to suffer in an unbodied manifestation soul hovers in the subtle body in different places looking for some way to enjoy because the subtle body cannot enjoy without a gross body 
And therefore, it says, and Prabhupada was just talking yesterday, I was listening, to he was saying, yeah, many times, you, you know, there are many people who are haunted by ghosts and they speak all kinds of crazy things. Although it's not that person speaking, it's the ghost speaking through that person. That ghost has taken over that living entity's body. So this is the uh, the uh, horrors of this material world. It's just one form of suffering and calamity after another. So devotees can make progress by having kirtan. Kirtan is the way to purify the atmosphere, purify the individuals, purify everything. The holy name, when it's resounded with enthusiasm and with uh, uh, with many devotees chanting together, the whole place becomes Vaikuntha. Because wherever Krishna appears, it says, is one verse in the Padma Purana, it says, Krishna speaks it. He says, uh, I'm not in the hearts of the yogis, nor am I in the, in this in Vaikuntha. Where am I? I I am there wherever my devotees are chanting my glories. So the presence of Krishna can be found and experienced when we devotees come together and hear and chant the glories of the Lord. We had that experience this past weekend in Sadhu Sangha. 3,000 devotees came for a four-day program, two half days and two full days of kirtan, which was uh, really amazing. Uh, the atmosphere was so surcharged with spiritual energy. And everyone there was experiencing great happiness we saw that how the energy was so strong that everybody was lifted up and uh, yeah so the holy name is very very powerful it's not only very powerful it's krishna himself <laughs> so therefore devotees should make plans to chant to dance and to invite others to take part And there is one statement by, I think it's on one bhajan, it says that the devotees of the Lord, they come together and they chant and then they dance and they feel a little tired after dancing. So then they take a little bit of prasadam and then they begin chanting again and dancing again. And they take a little more prasadam and then again they chant and dance, and again, they feel a little tired, they take a little more, and this goes on continuously. There's no end to this performance of Harinam Sankirtan. And this is what will purify the whole world. Therefore, when we spread the glories of the Holy Name everywhere, the whole atmosphere becomes Vaikuntha. And even the miserable non-devotees become happy. <laughs> Some of them, many of them do. So one should not fear death. One should just be ready for death. One should fear uh, wasting time. That's a greater fear. This time is so valuable that every moment one can understand that as time goes on, my life is getting shorter. So what am I doing? Am I wasting time on material pursuits? Or am I uh, actually using my uh, the time Krishna has given me to become fully self-realized? So a devotee doesn't want to waste any time because they know time is very, very precious. It's time of Krishna. Krishna says, time I am. <laughs> And for the non-devotees, they live, they live in the future, lament about the past, they're never happy in the present. Devotees are happy in the present 
learn from the past and look forward to the future. <laughs> Hey, we'll stop there. Thank you so much, Marge. It was such a wonderful class, and especially sharing with us the um, the ecstasy that that took place in um, in Dallas for the Sadhu Sangha. Thank you so much. We were just, I know, I was imagining, you know, when you're describing, we chant and then we dance and we get tired, we eat, then again we chant and we dance. I was just imagining it, and it was so so, so amazing. Thank you so much, okay. Marge. There's even t-shirts now says sing, dance, eat, repeat. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. a nice one, George. <laughs> yeah, they some devotees got together and made a t-shirt. <laughs> I like the last one, repeat. <laughs> sing, dance, eat, repeat. <laughs> that's amazing. That's amazing. That's really nice. That's nice. Thank you, Marge. I'm going to stop sharing the screen and and so that we can um, have each other's um, association and Marge can see it and we can see Marge. And also, if you're able to uh, um, uh, show your video, please go ahead and do so. And we'd like to ask the devotees have any questions, any clarification, my, questions. My, my video is not on. No, yours is on, Marge. I'm saying if devotees can turn there also that we you can see us. Yes. Yeah, so I can so far I can see let me see nine nine out of thirty two. <laughs> Again when the numbers are increasing. <laughs> you had to use the number to wake everybody up, Maharaj. It, it I I think when we use that the, the number is like whoops. We start thinking mathematically. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. Maharaj. That really yeah. worked. <laughs> yeah, we should. This is a personal movement. <laughs> yes, Maharaj, it is. It is. Yes, Sri Devi. We're up to 10 now. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true, Maharaj. It's a personal movement. And whatever, I think whatever gadgets we have that's making us impersonal, we have to use it to make it personal, which is like, oh, Krishna. Yeah. Yes, Sri Devi, please go ahead. Thank you, Anasuya. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, <laughs> Today, Sri Devi, and there's a dramatic performance there. <laughs> okay. All right, go ahead. Maybe I'm not quite clear about this, and that's why I'm asking this question. How is it that simply by calling Yamaraj, calling the controller of death Yamaraj, we can get freedom from death and get eternal life? Yeah. He, 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 death is his servant. So he sends death out. He's not death himself. He's the controller of death. Death is there. He has two two servants. One is called time, and the other one's called death. They both work in supporting uh, his his service of bringing the living entities to him, who are who are who have to get the reactions of their material activities. So yeah, he's a devotee. He came in this material world as as Vidura. That was that's a whole long story. We talked about that a few weeks ago. How he was cursed to take birth in this material world. And we'll be here as Vidura. Oh, well, he's a devotee. He likes you know his job is not so nice. It's like when you're a devotee of the Lord and you have to punish people, I mean, you do it because it's required. Because that service is needed. But it's not that he enjoys punishing people. He's a devotee. A devotee is very compassionate by nature. 
he's not a fierce personality. He's a very sweet personality. But he has his service. So how by calling him, do we get out of the cycle of birth and death? Is it because we are also taking part in the kirtan and therefore we are getting purified and then we are not entering that process? Or how, how does that work? Just by calling Yamaraj? Don't worry, it, it works. Don't worry about it. Okay. I'm trying to figure it out. He's very auspicious. So if you get the favor of Yamaraj, then everything is nice. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. My humble obeisance. Thank you, Sri Devi. Yes, Prem Kishore, go ahead with your question. Um. Thank you, Anastasia Mataji. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Sorry I'm on my way out of the house, so can't turn the camera on, but please accept my humble obeisances. August to Prabhupada. August to you. Guru Maharaj, uh, two days ago, uh, the Swayam Bhagwan Keshwar Swami Maharaj was giving class to Hare Krishna Africa, and I was hearing his class. It was on the same line, and he was sharing about his time with Janki Nath Prabhu, uh, that he asked him, that what goes on in the mind of a person who is facing his inevitable death, like right face to face. So I said, Janki Nath Prabhu told him, it gives, death gives priority. The, the things which are really, really important to take over. He said, we discussed that death gives, the concept of death or the face of death gives clarity uh, of what I really need at this time. And the face of death also gives um, Im immunity. Like, uh, okay, I have grudge against this person or that person has this against me. It doesn't matter anymore. So you become very, very immune. What Jankinath Prabhu mentioned to Maharaj. And also um, clarity, immunity, uh, priority. And uh, I'm forgetting one thing, but my question is i have a twofold question uh that okay this sounds very nice but my question is that part one that the death also gives this kind of a sense at least to where i am and i'm just a beginner that oh i'm gonna i might be like losing my service what i'm doing right now and i don't know if this is going to be continuing in the same way and second is uh, there is still an, a fear. There is still a fear. So does that mean if there is a fear, still a fear that uh, that I that I'm is it a measure of one's caliber of bhakti as where one is in what stage of bhakti one is in? Nishtha is not there yet. Well, we have to analyze that fear. What is it? Is it fear of the unknown? Where am I going? Is it fear of losing what I have now. Is it, yeah, those are the two categories generally. Is it fear of the of the process of dying? What is that fear? So um, I think devotees have a little concern that um, they don't fear losing, leaving wherever they are. They're, they're more fearful of, or a little concerned about where they're going to go. <laughs> because they have faith that Krishna is there. But they, um, they also may think, well, I wasted so much time in my life and now it's ending. And they lament that, that wasting of time. That happens... At the time of death, also, you start. To, one starts to think, "Oh, well, if I would have used my time better, I could have did so much more for Krishna consciousness. I could have become even more. I could have became a, you know, fixed in my devotional life." In other words, 
they regret and what they have done, what they didn't do in the past, they wasted so much time. So that's, that's something we can prevent right now. Don't waste time. Don't think you just, because the, the conditioned soul always thinks, you know, when Yamaraj itself was asking Yudhisthira, what is the most amazing thing in this material world? And Yudhisthira answered the question. He said, the most amazing thing is that people are seeing their friends, uh, people who are close to them and others die. And they're thinking, it's not going to happen to me. Hmm. We all think like that. It's not going to happen. But whoever has a material body has to give it up at some time. We call that death. For devotee, we call it change of body. For pure devotee, we call that uh, perfection of life. So, yeah, that, that fear generally is the fear of the unknown. But if you have it's faith in Krishna, that Krishna will take care of me. And why should I fear? There was one very wonderful Prabhupada disciple. She was leaving the body. And she was saying at the end, Krishna loves me. That's all I care. Krishna loves me. <laughs> He could understand, yeah, Krishna loves, and Krishna does love everyone. And if, if you understand the principle of love, you understand that if God loves you, he's always doing the best thing for you. So with that in mind, then death is not, not a fearful situation. Thank you, my aunt. So nice. Well, we want to we want to stay in this material world as long as we can, so we can preach Krishna consciousness. We don't want to stay here, so we can, you know, eat pizza, or, you know, or you know, go to parties. We're not. <laughs> it's not not that we want to stay here to do anything in this material world. We want to stay here. So we can perfect our life and ultimately try to try to capture a few conditioned souls out there and bring them back in. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you for the nice question, Prem Kishori. Nice question. And if if others would like to ask a question, please do raise your hand. You can just uh, jump right in, or I can I can call upon you. Uh, I'm going down the list so that I don't miss anyone. Yes, Silpesh Prabhu, go ahead. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri Prabhupada. Uh, Maharaj, if we're not well, can we chant with our beads lying down? Is that permitted? <laughs> Well, if you're relegated to that position and there's no alternative, yeah, but generally we try to sit in the proper way because that, that enhances concentration. When the spine is erect, concentration is more, yeah, more, uh, well, what's the word? more accessible. <laughs> That's why Prabhupada, when you listen to the Java tape, Prabhupada would say, sit properly. And so, yeah, but if you're sick and you can't sit up, try anyway. <laughs> Because if you lay down, you might fall asleep. 
tendency of falling asleep in there. I was just thinking if in the process of death, we're probably lying down anyway. So I guess we have to practice what others want to be able to remember Krishna at that moment. No, that's one thing you don't have to practice. <laughs> Sorry, Maharaj? No, you don't have to practice lying down. Don't worry. <laughs> you know, it'll happen automatically. <laughs> okay, thank you. You don't have to practice. We can practice doing dandawats. Yeah. That kind of lying down is good. That means head down, not head up. Hi, <laughs> Krishna Maharaj. Thank you very much for this wonderful lecture. And thank you for reminding me that I do not have to bother because Krishna is here. He will care. Thank you so much. Yeah. Hi, Krishna. Thank you, Mother Tirtha. Just, just hearing you saying that is helping me to remember that the Lord's that that the Lord loves us. Thank you so much. <laughs> That's Thank a powerful you. statement when you think about it. Very powerful. Thank you, Marge. Yes, Scala Prabhu, please go ahead with your question. Krishna, and thank you for a wonderful class. Um, I uh, hmm. I read all the uh, Shema Bhagavatam and everything. And in that reading, I might misunderstood, but I have read about uh, the situation where uh, Ramur, Yamaraj uh, did uh, was harsh in his uh, uh, judgment, and that's why he came like a, as a uh, vidura because he got cursed because he was harsh. What he'd have done, and I read so many times curses which happens all the time, or had happened all the time, and uh, it makes me somewhat uh, weary to ask my question to see why to understand the situation by my asking question and it makes me be somewhat afraid to do it because there is also the name of uh, uh, offense uh, uh, Aparada and uh, all other things. I I am not born in uh, Hindu religion. I was born in a Muslim family, and I learned about uh, Krishna consciousness very very long, uh, so uh, very late in my life. And I'm trying. I understand it. I respect it. I, I and I really 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 want to follow the the principle but there are some things that i don't understand and i have to ask questions and i'm afraid to do it because it might be offense it might be uh aparada. so how to do it not to get cursed because of that or get judged because of that you know what i mean <laughs> Yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, just practice humility. If you're humble, you won't make it. You, you'll never get cursed, and you'll never get. You'll never make mistakes. We practice humility. When we ask questions, we should not have a preconceived answer with with the question. That makes the the question somewhat uh, it brings in the false ego. When we're asking questions, we should be ready to hear the answers. Otherwise, what's the use of asking questions if we're not ready to accept the answers? So yeah, we practice humility means I'm trying to understand something. So I'm questioning based on that. 
not that I'm trying to put forward my ideas in the form of a question. That's why we say, are there any comments or questions? We don't say just questions or just comments. So we allow for comments. That means what I what I understand from the lecture or what I understand from the reading, that's comments. Questions are like, well, I read this and it's not clear, therefore give me the understanding. So if we're humble, it's, it becomes natural to ask questions. Yeah, humble means you just want to learn, that's all. We shouldn't be afraid to ask questions. I hope that helped Mother Scarlett. She just, okay. Thank you for that. Yes, okay. Thank you, Marge. Any questions from devotees? Any comments? Anything that you would like to um, ask or share? Marge, I have a question and um, you mentioned in your class uh, three forms of the Lord. One, um, three. I'm trying to think how you put it. Uh, you mentioned the Paramatma within the soul, um, Yamaraj, and the third person. I think Marge, you mentioned is Lord Shiva. Yeah, he's called Shiva. Is called the Father of all living entities. Marge, I'm trying to understand how does that play in the three. I, I'm, I'm trying to understand Lord Shiva's role. Well, he's as good as the super soul because in the sense that when creation comes, the unmanifested material energy is what is in the form of what is called Pradhan. <laughs> that is all of the ingredients that make up the creation are in an aggregate state. And then in order to initiate the next creation, Mahavishnu glances <clears throat> in the direction of Pradhan. And that glance contains three elements. One is um, that glance, that actually that glance is Shiva. The glance itself is Sadashiva. That's why we say that um, Advaita Charya is a manifestation or a combination of Sada Shiva and Mahavishnu in one. So that glance is Shiva. Also within the glance are the living entities. And so when the Lord glances, he projects all the living entities along with that power of glance, which is Shiva. Shiva Shakti, <laughs> his consort, Parvati, Uma, you know, Sati, she is the personification of the material energy. <clears throat> and Shiva is the father of that same material energy. Together they make up the, the aggregate of the all material activities. And Shiva is in charge of the mode of ignorance also because the mode of ignorance is the first manifestation of the living entity's existence in the material world where the false ego appears and that's represented by Lord Shiva. So these are the details. If you read on the, uh, mostly it's in the Brahman Samhita mostly, but you can also get ideas from, or some understanding from Srimad Bhagavatam in the second canto and parts of the third canto. Thank so you, Ma. Second canto and third canto, okay. So the answer is Shiva is that glance that comes by Mahavishnu's glance. Okay. And that glance is carried by Ramadevi. It's not that the glance goes directly. It does, but at the same time, it's supported by Ramadevi, who is the, the manifestation of the female aspect. And she moves that <clears throat> glance towards uh, 
So we see both the feminine and masculine aspects of the uh, of existence are there in the creation. Just like when we create in this material world, it takes both man and woman together to bring about life. So in the same way, that's the same principle is there in this in the unfolding of the creation. That's Shiva Shakti. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. I'll definitely refer to second and third canto you said. Also, okay. yeah, Brahma Samhita is more clear, more detailed. Okay, Brahma Samhita. Thank you, Maharaj. The beginning. Yes, Ma the, I'm sorry. You said the beginning, the beginning, Maharaj? Yeah, it's not. It's the, the verses that come in here before. We get into verse number 29 before that. Of Brahma Samhita. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Maharaj. We'll definitely look into that. Yes, Mother Scarlett, go ahead. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, I. Uh, what about when someone uh, curses somebody because this person has done something unknowingly, didn't know even didn't know that the, the thing he he or she did was wrong, but still got cursed, and that curse still uh, came true. Uh, so can I please help, beg you to help me to understand? Yeah, yeah. What about when yeah. you don't know that you did? Yeah, well, the thing is, who goes around cursing people? <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't see devotees going around cursing anybody. <laughs> that doesn't happen. It's a rare situation if that ever happens. And and then who who's who's who who's powerful enough to make a curse that actually comes true? <laughs> it's it's, it's like, it's. Uh, I, what I mean is, I, because I read it somewhere, so I want to understand uh, how it's applied when you don't, when this person or this entity didn't know it, did something without thinking about it, without any any bad thought, did it because well, have, this person knew that to do. Give me an example in the Bible. Time. So you go, well, we can say that the Rasa Muni. He cursed Maharaj Ambarish. But Maharaj Ambarish was a pure devotee and he took shelter of Krishna. And therefore, the curse didn't have an effect. Krishna prevented and saved him from the reactions of that curse. <laughs> Prahlad Maharaj was harassed by his father, but he was protected by Krishna. But there are examples in the, in the scriptures, but these things are, you know, the scriptures pull together different incidents that have happened throughout millenniums, not just when you're reading the Bhagavatam, you're not reading something that is contemporary. It's happened sometimes, you know, millions of years ago. But how many times in the Bhagavatam do we read somebody being cursed? It happens, yeah. But have you been cursed? Somebody's cursed you? I don't know. I don't know. I don't think that, so. that, I, that I'm going and wondering about things, what happens in my life uh, as a child and so on and so on and so on. I wonder, I don't know. I don't know because for me, it's I have a difficulty to understand how a, a child can get some uh, karma? The child is a child. How do how do a child should understand the karma? That's why I wonder. Can can it? Maybe it has to do with the curse and not karma. Maybe I don't know. I I'm just wondering. Yeah, this cursing thing is not a regular thing. Don't I mean? Don't make that a. If some sometimes someone has a. Uh, becomes angry with someone or has a bad feeling towards someone. That doesn't mean it's, it's a curse. 
Of Thank course, you. it has to be done with proper rituals in order for it to work. You know, um, Sukh uh, Sukacharya cursed Bali Maharaj because he didn't listen to him to lose everything. When the curse came true, he lost everything. But but Sukacharya knew he was going to lose it anyway. But he cursed him in that way. So there are curses, but they come from using very powerful personality. <laughs> Let's see if I, yeah. Thank you. If, Thank you. If you, if you, if, if a lesser devotee tries to curse a a more advanced devotee, that that's not going to work. I curse you. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> Not a thing that goes on all the time. Well, I was thinking of things well, when the roadies came to Prabhupada and said, This is the opposite. Where the roadies were in India, and it was the beginning of the Krishna consciousness in India with Prabhupada. And some of the Indian people, they were coming up to the devotees and saying, Oh, we bless you in your next life, you'll become a Brahmin. <laughs> when Prabhupada heard that, he laughed. He said, that's like a, it's like a crow trying to give a blessing to a cow. <laughs> so the same thing is, the crow tries to curse a cow, it doesn't make any difference for the cow. But if your spiritual master curses you, then you're in trouble. <laughs> or if a powerful person who has a lot of shakti, like we find the Muni, he sends out curses quite often. He's powerful. He's an energy of Lord Shiva. <laughs> Thank you, Marge. Any other questions from devotees that's lingering in your mind? You would like to ask, get clarified, anything that's coming, please uh, do raise your hand. Before I miss anyone, I'm just going down the list here before I miss anyone. If there isn't, Marge, would you like to end with one round of chanting or do you have something planned this morning? Yeah, both qu both questions are yes. Uh oh, <laughs> I'm always asking the wrong question, Marge. I'm so sorry, Marge. You I feel like I put you in a dilemma. You, you, you asked two questions, and they both the answer was yes to both of them. <laughs> yes, I would like to chant Japa, and yes, I do have things to do. <laughs> I feel like I'm always putting in a dilemma, Marge. I feel so bad. <laughs> No, don't worry. I won't curse you. Don't worry. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Probably Marge, worse. Your curse, Marge, it will be a blessing anyway. I know that. So I'll... <laughs> it's mercy and blessings. There's a story where it's it's not in the Bhagavatam, but it's in the it's in the Hari Bhakti Sudodaya. It's about the life of Prahlad Maharaj. At one point, this is not mentioned in the Bhagavatam, that Harani Kashipu got his Brahmins, these were tantric Brahmins, to throw curses at Prahlad Maharaj. And so they, you know, they gathered around him and they start chanting all of these mantras that were curses. But because he was completely fixed on Krishna, the curses went back towards the Brahmins and the Brahmins were suffering. Whoa. So if, yeah, if someone, someone who is not qualified to curses, 
that curse has to go somewhere. And if they usually it comes back to the person who gives it. Narada Muni cursed uh, what was it? Nala Guvera Mani Griva mm -hmm. mm -hmm. his trees. But he uh, modified the curse and he made it where they could take birth as trees in the courtyard of Yama, uh, Nanda Maharaj and be freed by Krishna. Because they were they uh, realized their mistake and they asked for forgiveness. But once a curse is given, it cannot be withdrawn. The reaction has to go somewhere. <clears throat> but it can be modified by the person who gives it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was cursed never to eat strawberries. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. But then later on, I was told by a very senior devotee that the curse has no effect because the person who cursed me left Krishna consciousness. <laughs> <laughs> so you can you can eat strawberries, Marge. <laughs> so I can eat. I, now I can. Stay. <laughs> That's a long story how that happens. <laughs> Hare Krishna. So sometimes I honor the curse when I don't want any strawberries. <laughs> Time, place, circumstance, Maharaj. <laughs> All right, I'll be back. All right, Maharaj.